Good morning, gang. Happy Saturday morning. Okay, today's topic <clears throat> falls into one of those categories of things that make you go, hmm. Yeah. A lot of us have heard the stories over the last couple of years of the mass migration in the United States. And we keep hearing over and over and over, oh, people are moving to Texas. Oh, people are moving to Florida. Oh, people are moving to Tennessee. Right? You've all heard that. You know, and the overwhelming comment that you hear is, well, they're moving there because there's no state income tax. That's a bunch of bullshit. Okay. I ran across something this morning that dumbfounded me. Okay. And this is data through that was compiled two days ago. Okay. As of Thursday with all the information for the first three quarters of the year. So through September 30th. So this data is three weeks fresh. That's it. Okay. This isn't some 2021 study or anything like that. This is extremely recent. I want you to look at this. This is a map of the states that have gained and lost the most population that have moved in 2023. Notice the dark green states, the darkest of the dark green ones, where people are moving to. And this kind of shocked me. South Carolina... Alaska and Hawaii are the states that are seeing the most people move there percentage wise. Okay. I can see South Carolina. Alaska is very expensive. Hawaii is the most expensive state in the country to live. And let's not even talk about the Lahaina fires. Okay. You look at the second tier of where they're moving to. Montana, South Dakota, Arkansas, Tennessee, North Carolina, West Virginia, and Maine. Primarily red states. You could say Maine's purple, but I mean, Maine's got basically two districts. It's got Portland and it's got the rest of the state. Okay. It's interesting to see. Now, why are people moving? Well, it could be taxes. You'd say it'd be weather, but if people are moving to Alaska, Montana, Maine, it's not like they're trying to get out of the snow. Okay, You could say it's job opportunities. Well, I'm not thinking there's boatloads of job opportunities in Montana and Maine and West Virginia, okay, or South Dakota for that matter. Sure, there's some. Nothing, nothing against any of those states for sure. It's just more open country. So maybe people are moving to get away from the cities, which is a good thing. <clears throat> However, we've all heard the comments in the past, don't Californicate my Idaho. Stay out of, insert state here, we're full, right? You know, we've all made that comment. We don't want people moving to where we are. I'm seeing that here, where I am. And I want to give you a couple of stories. These are things I've heard in the last couple of days about this area. Sure, me being in Tennessee, we have an influx of people. Northerners, going back to that map, where are they coming from here? Illinois, Ohio, the Northeast, okay. And unfortunately, as much as we all hope that it was the conservatives that were leaving the liberal states, the liberals are doing it too. I'm going to give you a couple of stories. You tell me how you like these? The lake I live on, okay, Norris Lake is huge, okay, covers, I think it's got 800 and some odd miles of coastline. There's a story about a woman who is a northerner moving down here, wanted to start a petition that, and she went into a store and asked the store owner if she could hang her petition up in his window for people to sign. He read the petition. She wanted to limit the lake usage to Monday through Thursday for Tennessee residents and only allow the lake to be used by out-of-state residents on the weekends. The store owner 
basically pulled his lighter out of his pocket and burned her petition right in front of her. Okay. No, sorry, you're not going to tell people when, you know, you, you have some serious audacity coming down here and saying, I'm, my northern attitude is going to tell you when you can use a body of water. Okay, kind of funny. I talked to another guy a couple of days ago. This was kind of interesting. <clears throat> and he is, let's just put it this way, he's in the service industry. So he comes out to people's houses and does certain things. I don't want to say who he is uh, or specific what he does. But so he was talking to us and he goes, yeah, he goes, I've got two different price lists. One for the people up here and one for the people in Knox County. Now, Knoxville, like every other city, is uber liberal. And as he was saying, he'll take care of the people who live out here in the country. He's going he's gonna to milk the people, that, the, the liberals that live in Knoxville. Okay. I thought it was quite humorous. Okay. But I agree with him. He's taking care of his own, which is what we all need to concern ourselves with. Because maybe it, it'd be hard to say this was organized, but we don't have a census coming up for another six years. Right? And if you remember what happened in the 2020 census, California lost a couple of seats, Texas picked up one, Tennessee picked up one. The conservative states picked up some seats in Congress. They picked up some electoral votes for this next election that we're going to see. Because more people moved to red states. So there's more congressmen, more electoral votes. But what if it turns out that this is some sort of concerted underground effort, maybe, okay, to liberalize the red states? I mean, we know the Democrats tried to make a play for Texas in 2020. They lost, okay, but, but notwithstanding all the creative vote counting that we had, Arizona, a traditionally red state, went blue. Georgia, a traditionally red state, went blue. It's close, but it doesn't take much, you know, you look at a lot of states that are solid red states, and they may be 53, 47, okay? And that's a solid red state. As we get all this movement around the country, are the liberal ideas moving into our backyard? Now, depending on where you are, people are probably not going to be overly receptive to it. I don't see the people in Wyoming going, hmm, you know what? Liberal ideas might be a good idea from here. It's a good way to get yourself shot, okay? You know, look how well Liz Cheney did, <laughs> right? Okay. I'd say the South is pretty safe, but Georgia flipped, okay? Where are all these people from California, from Illinois, from Massachusetts, from New Jersey, from Maryland, moving to. If they're moving to our backyard and they're bringing their idiotic liberal ideas that destroy their state, so now they're coming to destroy yours, what happens to you? I mean, where I live, obviously, I don't have a southern accent. I'm not born and raised in Tennessee. I didn't come here going, I want to bring different values to Tennessee. I came here going, I agree with your values, and I want to live in with, that, with people of that same mindset. Not everybody's like that. There's areas right here by me that are just completely inundated with liberals. They come down here, they think they've got all this money, they buy their big 
million dollar homes, you know, on postage stamp lots and, you know, drive their Cadillacs or their Porsches or something, which I get a kick out of. I would talk, you want to talk about a completely useless vehicle out here? Yeah, go buy yourself a little sports car, okay? <laughs> Doesn't, you know, but they do it. And they think, hey, we're going to convince everybody to live the way we want. That doesn't fly too well out in rural America. But that's what they're trying. And that's what you need to pay attention to. You know, we've talked a lot, you know, and I know there's people out there that go, I'm not going to vote. It's a waste of time. Okay, it, it, and I'm going to say it again. You're part of the problem, not part of the solution. But at least you might want to start paying attention to what's going on in your local area. Because if you get all these liberals with all their idiotic ideas that they're bringing from Boston or Chicago or New York City or San Francisco, moving into your area going, hey, you know what? We need drag queen story hour at our elementary school. And they're the ones running for school board or they're the ones running for county commissioner, or they're the ones running for mayor, or they're the ones running for dog catcher, I don't care. They're going to implement those ideas. And then you're stuck. And then you have nobody to blame but yourself. We can't really put a sign up at the city limits and say no liberals allowed as much as I'd like to. Sorry, you know, whoever's got the money to buy the house, if their offer is accepted, they can move in. But nobody says we have to listen to them, and nobody says we have to make it comfortable for them. We need to dig our heels in and protect what's ours, because if we don't, we don't have to worry about North Korea or China or Russia or Iran taking it from us. It's going to be taken from us by our next door neighbor who just has a completely warped mind and mental disease. Pinball out.